Texas. The cars dropped from 11th to 12th in the AP poll after falling to the Iris 104-101 in an epic slugfest that spanned five overtimes and nearly four hours. Both teams fought, th fought their hearts out in what would be the longest Big East game in regular season history. It didn't look like as if the cars were going to even need overtime when Shane Behannon made a free throw with 51 seconds left in regulation to give UofL an eight-point lead. But Jerry and Grant led the Iris on a 12-4 comeback, hitting three straight threes and then tying it on a three-point play with 16 seconds left. Russ Smith had a chance to win the game at the end of the first OT, but he launched a 26-footer that clanged off the glass and left his teammates no time for the rebound. Free throws were once again the Achilles heel for the cards. The team made just 30 of 48 attempts. Gorgie Jing, who was 13 of 16, missed a pair with 25 seconds left in regulation that would have likely see sealed the win. Shane Behannon could have put them ahead with 16 seconds left in the third overtime, but made only one of two. And in the final OT, Montrez Harrell missed two, including an air ball that would have tied the game with 24 seconds left. Smith had a chance to tie it at the end of the fifth OT, but his three-point attempt missed before fighting Irish students flooded the court to celebrate. It marked the sixth time in the last eight meetings that a game between the Fighting Irish and Cards went into overtime. Patino didn't take any questions following the loss, but he did give a 30-second statement about the game. Typical Notre Dame Louisville game. They made some just incredible shots. I can't fault our defense. We were on them. Um, the shots were incredible, so we've got to give them a lot of credit because I've never seen shots like that, and I've been coaching a long, long time. We made a few mental mistakes down the stretch by um, forcing the issue when we had the lead. Um, but sometimes when you're a bad foul shooting team at times, it's not the worst thing in the world to get two points. But proud of our guys. Four overtime game. Hopefully we'll learn from it. Tony Vanetti from the Afternoon Underdogs joins me in the studio tonight. <laughs> I've seen a lot of bizarre U of L games over the years. That ranks right up there think? with with the most bizarre of the bizarre. Uh, so much to talk about. First of all, you know, this is one thing I don't think they really had any control over. Grant makes, I mean, he made some crazy three. You got the lead. A guy just gets in one of those zones. Boom, you're in overtime. I didn't think the cars, I mean, the last one, Russ was in his grill. Let's go on the timeline. The, earlier in the day, the, the, I tell you what, maybe the most lame uh, college game day I've ever seen was at Notre Dame earlier that day. The signs were awful. I'm trying to do a timeline here so You're we just go through the put whole, it in perspective. The day, the day in perspective. The day in perspective was it was boring game day. Even though the kid made the half-court shot, didn't matter. The kids were kind of lame. The posters were weak. And then they get to the game in the first 38 minutes. I wanted to write an apology letter to the nation and it say, was horrific. I'm I'm really sorry for University of Louisville and Notre Dame's performance tonight because both teams sucked. Overall, both teams for 38 minutes, they no one wanted to win this game. Louisville could have won this game. Yes, they did have a choice to win this thing. They should have won this game by 20. I'm not trying, I'm not a sore loser here as a card guy, but they should have won this game by 20 points. Notre Dame was awful. It was clang. Let's go down the other end. Clang. Down the other side. Clang. No one could shoot well. No one could hit free throws. It was abysmal. Cooley, when Cooley fouled out with, I believe, six, six or seven, I mean, you thought then they had, they had it wrapped There's up. There's another one. They couldn't. But again, a guy, one thing I will agree with Rick, I mean, the guy hit a couple threes that were, oh, out, of were, this sick. were yeah. out of this world. Oh, yeah. But then you get to overtime. It got okay. surreal. It yeah. was surreal. You get, you get to overtime, and, you know, poor Russ. I, let's talk about Russ for a minute. Okay. You know, I've defended Russ. You know, I think he, you know. He, I'm going to defend him today. Yeah, I'm, I'm still going to. He played a bad game, made some poor choices. Right. But. I think if Louisville players look themselves, if the Louisville people look themselves in the mirror, including Rick Pitino, they can all take their share of the blame for this, don't you think? Uh, I will. T I'll tell you what. Okay, so Russ screwed up four times in the end of the game, yeah. right? I mean, t it was it four total number of the he took the last shot. I'll take it four in a row again. I'll take even Russ. The even the 30-footer? Now, that was ill advice. But, again, I will take Russ with the ball at the end of the game every single time. And, you know, like I said, it, now's not the time. But what they do about this law, we'll talk about the impact later. But let's right. talk about there were a lot of things that could But don't could've... you agree, Russ? Uh, I don't have a problem All right. with Russ. If there's, I, no, I think... if there's no play call, Chip, right? If right. there's no play call and you're supposed to make a play, who do you want to go off the bounce? Yeah, I absolutely. With Siva out of the game. With let's, Siva let's out talk, of the let's game. Let's talk about Peyton Siva. I okay. mean, Russ has been getting killed on message boards. He's become the whipping boy. But again, there's enough blame to go around here. 
Peyton Seaver, you cannot foul. I mean, he no. just he was non-existent no. out there. At, no. at the end of regulation, they couldn't get a shot off because he threw a bad pass. I mean, what? He is – there's something going on. I don't know if it's off the court or what's going on with him that's mental. He's in a rut, and I don't know what it is, but he needs to be – and I made this analogy to you before we went on the air. There needs to be a Teddy Bridgewater of this team. Teddy Bridgewater went over to his coach during the Rutgers game injured and said, put me in, I will win this game for you. There is no Teddy Bridgewater for this basketball team. Siva's supposed to be that guy. You're the senior. Calm everyone down. You win in overtime as Siva stays in. But he hasn't played like that in the last couple of weeks. He needs to find himself. I is mean, he I emotionally fragile? I don't know if I want to go there. All he's been seems, through? He seems to be, you know, he seems to get flustered easy. If he's not playing well and things aren't good, his body language isn't good. I no, mean, he's, no, he no, seems no. to suck. He seems to, you know, kind of lose confidence. You can't have your quarterback sulking, dude. Right. And you that, can't have the guy in charge of your team. And that's why I give Russ a pass because a lot of times he was put in that position on Saturday because Siva was on the bench. Luke Hancock. And, you know, when the announcers, the best thing they say about you, Boy, Hancock isn't bashful. I mean, he was jacking up three. Luke, now, he made a couple big shots, but he, Han, thought, he, was grip. he thought he was jacking up threes <laughs> like Larry Bird. I was, I, was just, I was waiting for him to do the little, you know, when Bird <laughs> hit that in the three point contest, stuck the finger. I was waiting for him to do no, But he wasn't making, he was four of 13. I know. Shane was know. a man. I mean, 30, but even Shane made some huge mistakes. Dropped he the caught ball. the ball out of bounds, dropped the ball, dropped the ball, missed layup, missed layup. Uh, you know, it, during regulation, he took over in in post post play, but I, he's he's another one. I just really had boy. a great game, but again, if you if you Not have trouble catching the ball and you can't shoot free, it's hard to be a go to guy if you can't be trusted to make free throws. Well, I think that's the problem with Shane, because really technically, if I was Rick, I would have said, look, on every possession against this Notre Dame front line that had no answer. You go, it, the ball must touch. You go through Shane every time or you're coming out of the game. It was like Groundhog Day for Rick, okay? Remember that movie Groundhog Day where he keeps waking up in the same day and the same things happen every single day? That's what it must have been happened. Like every uh, overtime, five more minutes, Russ misses a shot. Five more minutes, Russ misses a shot. It was like Groundhog Day in the movie. It was awful to watch. And they were making, they were, of course are playing with house money, right? Oh, yes, They're playing with four backups on their home floor. There's no reason why they should be in the game. And then they made Garrick Sherman look like Kevin Shoot McHale. McHale. I mean, yes. they made him look, I mean, he was doing up and unders, jump yes. books. Block out. Now, that, Gorgie and Shane had no answer Okay, for, but here's the other one. We need a beast in the blocks. We need an intimidator. We need an enforcer. We need someone in there to say, you bring the ball in this block one more time, you're going to be eating teeth. No, you know what I'm they, saying? They have... Somebody that's – stop. I mean, I love Gorgie and I love Shane, but they're always getting up off the floor. Why right. are you keep falling down? You need to hold your spot, right? Montrez. Man, let, let, speaking of Montrez, let's go like, – we've talked about oh, – you know, we've talked about, we've talked about Russ. We've talked about – Siva, we talked about Hancock, Shane, and Gorgie. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about Rick. How much of this falls on him? Ooh, yeah. Uh, Rick needs to draw up a, a play at the end of the game. I mean, that's, uh, I, I know that he had said in, the, in his, one of his press conferences that they don't really work on offense, that he does. He draws up defense. He's a defensive mastermind. And that the, the players, you should recruit le got level guys that, uh, that can play just offense. Go score. You know how to score. The scoring will come for defense. And we've always said that. It's, the whole system is predicated off a made basket, full court press, turnover, score in transition, right? right. Half court offense is not Rick's uh, forte, correct? You know, he'll, he'll try the high pick and roll with C. Draw. He's got a couple things he'll go to, but I want to see some C. You, you want to see more sets is what you're saying. You have to draw up at least you know three or four plays and, and say, okay, here's what we're going to go to with 16 seconds left. Here's, a, here's another thing about Rick. And, and ESPN, you know, they love, they love, they know what they're doing. Yeah, sure. They picked up on the side, UofL sideline. Yeah, the demeanor. Rick's demeanor. I mean, it was like every, every play, either he was doing some crazy hand gesture or, you know, yelling at somebody. I don't mind that in a general way. I don't mind that in a general way if that's the way his demeanor is every play and every, every game. That's fine. But there are times you have to put that away, and this was one of them. When you knew your team. Look at, look at that. Look at right. Mike Bray. 
That's, that's right. what I wanted to point he out. He looks like a circus bear going, hey, come on, everybody. We're having fun. You can see the disparity in the sidelines. You, you look at the U of L sidelines and the, he's yelling at the players. The players just look defeated. They look desperate and so did Rick and they played like it. And then you look at that showing Mike Bray in the, in the timeout and he's he's clapping and smiling and saying, come on, guys, we got this. This is fun. Look like they had they were a confident team having fun. U of L looked like they were just never understood why Rick just, just berates the kid. I mean, screams at him. But here's the thing in Rick's defense, though, he's the number two preseason team in America. Bray's got, you know, what, what is he doing this year? And he's got backups in. He's playing with house money, man. So Rick is there was a there. Were, they were in the moment, man. I mean, this is Louisville. They're supposed to beat this team today. They're not beating them and they're and they keep slipping through their fingers and, and it got to them. Uh, let's talk about all that we could sit here and talk about this all day oh, long. It's, it's the shows. But the bottom line is, it really doesn't matter, does it? And this team is going to be judged by what they do in March. So, yes, while the way they lost the game was painful, they come out and beat St. John's. They get in the tournament as a, as a three seed. It's, they're going to be judged in March. So, are people, over, are people overreacting to this loss? No, no, because I think they're frustrated. Again, I think they, they believe that they were going to get uh, what IU is getting, okay, in, in their season. 20 and 3, 9 and 2 in the conference, and the best conference in America. And that's not what they're getting. Uh, I think also short term, the miracle on Maine. Remember that? Yeah, Louisville yeah. comes back 17 down in six minutes. They win that game, okay? That pole vaulted them to a fantastic regular season, Preston Knowles, and they lost in the first round. Maybe that was the team that they should have had, but they got they that game said, we could do anything. Now, if you look at Notre Dame the next couple of weeks and watch if they don't go on a, a win streak, Louisville cannot let this bother them. Don't let one loss they turn into. They cannot let this, because this is an epic loss in their heads. Okay? In their heads. But really, and the, the reality of it is, it shouldn't be. You played. Listen, you played. We all played sports growing up. You remember your touchdown. Do you remember this? Do you remember that play or make, when you made the block? Or do you remember when you got one away, which no one remembers? No one remembers when you, you, know, you had a bad play. You do. And 10 years later, you do. Bad play. You got 400 bad plays in this one. That's overwhelming. You think any of these kids got sleep the last two days thinking uh, about that? And they're hearing about it, but you, they got to be able to put it behind them. St. John's Thursday, you can't let it turn into a South Florida. Mm. St. John's is trying to get in the tournament. They're going to mm. come in here. You can't have a repeat of the South Florida home game that you had last year.